Hello guys, back again, and this time I'm going to talk about someone who affected my childhood a lot, uh, in a lot of ways, sometimes you don't realize someone affects your childhood until you hear what they've done, like you go, wow, this guy really affected me and I didn't know it, and it is Python, Vladimir, and, and Halo, uh, you would know him for his works on games like Joust, like Pinbot, uh, Taxi, you would also know him more for the Machine Bride of Pinbot, or high speed pinball machines. Uh, he this was basically uh, he was basically you know an art artist, a game designer, and a pinball machine designer. And this guy like Joust was my game. Okay, the artwork that he was responsible for on the side of that machine was unbelievably awesome. I loved that game. That game was in the arcade. That was game so stuck out to me when I originally saw it, and I just had to play it. It was a bird flying around. And that game, the faster it went. The harder it was to play, harder it was to control the ostrich or whatever you want to call the flying bird. We called it ostriches back then, but you know. And, and it's funny they can night on an ostrich, flying ostrich, but anyway. And while that game was difficult, I spent hours playing because I wanted to learn how to play that game. And yeah, there were little tricks. You learned, hey, I can fly and turn this way while I'm flying this way, and I'm going to slide, but if I hit that other guy, I can t take him out. Or, or You just learned little things as you played the game that, that you, you know, only you get playing the game more and more or seeing someone else do it. Which back then in the arcades, that's how you got better. It was either you just messed around with the game or you watched somebody else do something. You know, oh, I need to remember that because that, that can help me out when I play the game. But basically, he passed away uh, on April 9th. He had been battling cancer. Uh, unfortunately, they did a, a, a fun me go uh, for tw the goal of $20,000 for this and they were only like $800 shy when he passed away and they have said that the money's basically going to go to pay uh, final bills and final arrangements obviously for him uh, but let's tell you a story about this man because a lot of times we, we see art and stuff but we don't know the people behind the art uh, basically uh, he studied both in Romania and the United States uh, he actually worked as an animator for Disney in, and so in 1979, that was the change he made in his life when he moved to Williams Electronic, Electronics, uh, where he worked on the art for, of course, the arcade game Joust. Uh, he, he later worked for Midway Games and worked on more than a dozen pinball games. So some of them I announced before, you know, like High Speed and, uh, the machine Bride of Pinbot, uh, he actually worked briefly for Capcom's pinball division. I know some people are saying Capcom had a pinball division. They actually did. Uh, but this is a man that if you looked at what he did through his career, he probably affected or you played some of the stuff that he had worked on. You know, like Cyclone or Taxi or Pinbot or Bubbles, Joust, just to name a few. And... It's funny because, like, these one of those guys that, when I found out who he was and what he did, like, wow, that guy, that guy affected my childhood. Now, I played a lot of the pinball machines and arcade games that he either did the artwork for or had worked on somehow. Uh, and of course, a lot of people I knew growing up during the arcade days would only play arcade machines, but I always loved playing the pinball along with the arcade games. High speed was actually one I played a lot back in the day. You know, I grew up in a small town. They had this little variety store back in the arcade, Grace, Grace Hidden. And they'd always have, back in the corner, they changed it out where they put a pool table there. Because for some reason, there's always got to be a pool table with arcade machines. At least back then, there was. And uh, they put a pool table back there. And then in the corner, they had two or three arcade machines and pinball machine. And like for a while, there was high speed, black knight, you know, pinball machines. And I always played them. And I always learned how to play them. Uh, until I could pop it, because that was always my challenge. I'm gonna play this game until I learn how to pop. You know, get in the pop, man, you get a credit. So get a, get a credit for playing the game. Actually, in high speed, I was so good at that. At one point, that literally almost every time I played, I could pop it. And there was one point I remember uh, at a campground we camped at during the summer. They had arcade machines and pinball machines, a couple pinball machines, and they had high speed there. And I put a quarter in, and uh, it was that break from swimming because. You know, that's what I did swim a lot day a swimming pool, but during break I'd play arcade machines. And I, I just kept popping the pinball machine uh, 
over and over, and I must have spent an hour or two there just playing on that one quarter because I was able to get, I had learned how the ball bounced on that pinball machine, how much give the, of course, before you could tilt. Because, you know, one of the big things with playing pinball machine is how much you can nudge in the machine before it actually tilts. That's kind of one of the first things I do when I play a pinball machine. How much, how much give does this machine have before it tilts me? Because you have to know that, not, not, not necessarily to cheat, but some pinball machines back in the day, the ball would get stuck, and you'd have to nudge the pinball machine to get it out. And if it, had, it was very sensitive to tilt, there was no way to get the ball out without tilting, unfortunately. And so that time I had played it and, and, and popped it. I got really good at it because I played it all the time. Uh, in arcade machines, you know, like like Defender and Joust, those were pinball, those were video games, I, I, arcade games I would just play over and over again because they were colorful, uh, because they were unique, and the challenge factor to them, right? I mean, Defender, a lot of people played Defender, and while they liked the colors and what it looked like, and, you know, a spaceship running around, picking out the people, they, they couldn't get very far because, you know, Defender, you're doing a lot at once. You're trying not to drop the people. You're trying to pick the people up, trying to get, you know, safety, and fighting, obviously, the alien ships at the same time. And, of course, Joust is just, that game is just hard enough in itself, trying to fly under control. You're flying ostrich as I call it, uh, especially when the game later stage when the game goes insanely fast, or if you're playing two players, because that other player, back in the arcade days, so the other player would say, hey, I'll help you out, we'll play together, but sometimes the other player never intended to help you, the second they, you, you trust them, and the minute you, you turn your back and they know they got you, they'll take you out, that happens sometimes, anyway, that's it, it's a shame he died, uh, it's a shame because of the cancer, he could no longer do the job he loved to do. Uh, I think that's one of the worst things for somebody, you know, uh, when my dad passed away years ago, the worst thing for him was taking away his freedom because he loved to, you know, loved just to ride a bike or go out, and, and that was the worst thing. It's what he loved to do. The worst thing in the world for someone who loves what he does is to take that away from him, unfortunately. But uh, he left a lot of contributions, to, obviously, to the video game and pinball world, uh, that if you actually look at the list of games stuff you worked on, you'll probably find something that you played or you have fond memories of. And uh, um, my condolences was after his family. At the same time, uh, he affected my childhood and my arcade experience because I was one of the things as a kid. And we're rambling on forever about this. I loved staring at the arcade machine, uh, the machine marquee on the side of the, the arcade machines. That artwork. I in the back of the day, I wanted to memorize every little line, every little curve, every little color of those things because they were so unique, right? That's what made arcade machine, machines awesome. Not just the marquee on the front, the artwork around the screen. It was actually the, our stickers, our artwork on the sides of the machine uh, were, were really awesome. Sometimes, like, like you know, one stick out like Centipede, like Joust, like Defender, just absolutely loved that artwork on the side. And uh, so, did, you, did he affect you at all? Did, was there any game of his that like always stuck in your mind that you maybe it's just because of his art? I mean, not necessarily that he made the game, that his artwork affected you. Maybe when you went to the arcade and played certain machines, if you go look at the list of stuff he's actually responsible for. Uh, anyway, guys, like always, thanks for liking, favoring, subscribing. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys. They don't.